geomagnetic storm predicted to strike our Earth. This is the latest on space weather, today August 3rd. Large hourglass shaped hole in the Sun's atmosphere is facing our Earth. It is viewing solar wind in our direction and it's estimated to arrive August 5th and 6th. Solar wind right now is at 353 kilometers per second, density 3.6 protons per cubic centimeter. X-ray solar flares, 6 hour maximum A7, 950, UT August 3rd, 24 hour A7, 1143 UT August 3rd. NOAA forecasters say that a minor G1 class geomagnetic storm possible when the gaseous material arrives. Now what is a G1 class? The power systems, weak power grid fluctuations can occur. Spacecraft operations, minor impact on satellite operations possible. Other systems, migratory animals are affected at this at higher levels. Aurora is commonly visible at high altitudes. For example, around northern Michigan and even Maine. So that's what's awaiting us for the G1 class minor flare. The high altitude sky watchers should be alert for auroras, especially in the southern hemisphere where winter darkness favors visib the visibility. Also, we have noctilucent clouds that take place in August. The noctilucent clouds, the NLCs, are a summertime phenomenon. Normally the clouds begin to dim in late July, then fade away completely as August unfolds. It's their seasonal pattern. But this year, however, things might be different. Just last night, Gorin Strand of Ostersund, Sweden, witnessed a display of NLC clouds bright enough to see over the lights of a rock concert. Can you imagine? There's a video, there's an image here if you'd like to see it. On August 3rd during, he says, our yearly Strasjuran music festival, we got some really beautiful noctilucent clouds over the city center. It was quite hard to get the exposures balanced in this three-shot panorama because the lights from the stage kept changing all the time. I think I was the only one watching the clouds instead of the band performing. Now, in 2019, it's been a very unusual year for noctilucent clouds with sightings at record low latitudes as far south as even New Mexico and Southern California. Why is that? NASA satellites have detected unusual amounts of water in the mesosphere. Why is that? The extra moisture crystallized around specks of meteor smoke, creating an abundance of NLCs. If this trend continues, August might be a good month for NLC, contrary to normal seasonal patterns. Now, as far as the all fi fire, uh, the all sky fireball network, every night we know that NASA all sky cameras scan the skies above the U.S. for meteoritic fireballs. The automated software maintained by NASA's Meteoroid Environment Office calculates their orbits, velocity, penetration, depth in Earth's atmosphere, and many other characteristics. And the daily results are presented here on Space Weather. And today, August 3rd, the network reported 35 fireballs. 21 were sporadics, 9 were southern delta acrids, and 5 were proceeds. This is the month for a tremendous amount of uh, uh, shooting stars. If you're lucky enough to be in an area that didn't have too many city lights, you can spot them very easily. Now, near Earth asteroids, the potentially hazardous asteroids, PHAs, space rocks larger than 100 meters or 300 feet that can come closer to Earth than 0.05 AUs. None of the PHAs is on a collision course with our planet, although astronomers are finding new ones all the time. August 3rd, 2019, there were 1,983 potentially hazardous asteroids. As, as we know, they're finding new ones all the time. The next one that's uh, going to be the closest to us will be coming August 28th. 
at 2.7 lunar distances. It's uh, coming in at a velocity of 13.2 kilometers every single second, and it's about 300 feet across. Cosmic rays in our atmosphere, something new that they developed to predict model of radiation, aviation radiation, is called ERAD, short for Empirical Radiation Model. They're flying radiation sensors on board airplanes over the U.S. and around the world, and so far they've collected more than 22,000 GPS tagged radiation measurements, and using this unique data set, they can predict the dosage on any flight over the U.S with an error no worse than 15%. And they have a hot flight table here, the daily summary of calculations. It shows the five charter flights and the highest dose rates, and five commercial flights for the highest dose rates, and five commercial flights with near average dose rates, and so on. Well, basically, what you have is, the higher you go and the more hours you're there, uh, you can get uh, a tremendous amount of radiation exposure. Uh, for example, if you're at a, um, let's take an hour flight. A one hour flight? Okay, one hour flight. Take a one hour flight at a 23,000 foot altitude. Take a one hour flight at um, double that altitude. No, that's not going to work. Oh, double that altitude, let's say 41. 41,000 feet a little bit less, you get four times the radiation. Dose rate 60.2. Okay, Baltimore to Chicago, one hour, 28 minutes. You get 60.2 dose rate. Whereas if you're Minneapolis, Chicago, the, just under an hour, it's 18.5. Okay, M more than four times the radiation, as you can imagine. It's amazing. Uh, also, space for the balloons, they fly uh, in the stratosphere of California. They're equipped with radiation sensors to detect cosmic rays, a surprisingly down-to-earth form of space weather. The cosmic rays can seed clouds, trigger lightning, penetrate commercial airplanes even, and uh, there are studies linking cosmic rays with cardiac arrhythmias and sudden cardiac death in the general population. Can you imagine? The latest measurements show that cosmic rays are intensifying, intensifying, increasing of more than 18% from 2014, 2015 to 2018, 18%. If you extrapolate that to this year, it's about 24%, 23% increase in five years. Now, the data points that... Uh, Cosmic rays crash into Earth's atmosphere, producing spray of secondary particles, and it's most intense in the entrance to the stratosphere. Physicists Eric Reniger and George Foster discovered the maximum using balloons in the 1930s. That's the way we're measuring today. And uh, the radiation sensors detect X-rays and gamma rays in the energy range, and these energies span the range of medical X-ray machines and airport security scanners. But why are cosmic rays intensifying? The main reason is the sun. Solar storm clouds, such as the coronal mass ejections, the CMEs, sweep aside cosmic rays when they pass by the Earth. During solar maximum, the CMEs are abundant and cosmic rays are held at bay. But we're not at the solar maximum, now we're at solar minimum, so the solar cycle is swinging towards solar minimum, allowing cosmic rays to return to Earth. Another reason could be the weakening of Earth's magnetic field, which helps protect us from deep space radiation. The magnetic field, that is. Whereas if it's weakening, we get more of deep space radiation coming in at us, which is, of course, detrimental to our health. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. 
These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.